How's everybody today? Sorry. Good. There we go. Okay, so uh, the items that you're gonna need for the uh, for the linen, uh, either whatever scrap size you want, depends on the bowls or things that you want to cover up. There we go. Uh, whatever you want to cover up, so you can have a big long if you have like a big trencher that you want to cover. I'm gonna cut this in half. It'll just fit over a bowl nicely once it's done. Um, I'm using linen. You can use cotton if you want. Um, if you're going for historical accuracy, you can use the just scraps from whatever clothing you're making. Um, if you want to do it just for modern and fun stuff, because I'm seeing a lot of um, advertisements for the linen. Uh, companies are selling it now as a bio, like a earth-friendly way to cover it up. It is really good as um, as a saran wrap. Um, so you can use whatever cottony type fabric you like. I wouldn't use polyester or mix anything like that because it would probably melt. Uh, I've got this old pizza pan. No, no. I'm all good, sweetheart. <laughs> it's got some residuals on it from before. And you need your chunk of beeswax. So last night I was trying it with the, the cheese grater. And I used the tiny cheese grater just because uh, it makes the smaller pieces of uh, beeswax so it'll melt quicker. But it was really tedious to try and shave it that way. So you can do it that way. It just takes a long time. I took the potato peeler and just peeled little curls of beeswax. So just give it a little shave. Make a nice little pile. And then grab your linen, whatever size you're going for. You can do square, round, whatever floats your boat. All right. You're going to get your oven started to 200 degrees, something very low. Oh. My linen's got some little threads on it, so I'm going to trim that off first. There we go. Okay. Then on that old pizza pan or that old cookie sheet you're going to throw away because it's, it's about done, it's time. Just sprinkle on your beeswax. There we go. All right, so don't worry about getting it all the way around the edges. I mean, it's going to be warm when it comes out so you can spread it. There we go. And then you're just going to pop it in the oven. And what temperature is your oven at? I'm sorry, I had to take a call. That's okay. It's at 200. So very low. And yeah, if you wanted to do it with, uh, like I was saying, with the cheese grater, either a small cheese grater just for the small pieces of wax, but I found it, it took a long time and you have to keep clearing it off, clearing it off. So I found the potato peeler to work very well. So. And now it's all just waiting. I found that Michael sells um, pellets of beeswax in their candle making supplies. Ooh, I'd be curious to see how that works. I will show you my bag. Just hang on. Oh, yeah. And how much wax do you need for, a, like, is there a ratio or? Not so much. I think I just used, that was maybe half a cup, three quarters of a cup. 
I just filled a, it's a smaller bowl, just the bottom of the bowl. Cause as it, as it melts and relaxes over, then you can just smooth it over with a spatula. So basically then would it be like shape enough just to cover the material almost all the way to the edges? Pretty much, pretty much. Now, I like to keep checking on it just to make sure, I mean it is low temperature but Thinking about 10 or 15 minutes in the in the low oven should do it. And then with the spreading. So yeah, like whatever shapes you want to do. It's really it's a really good gift idea too, coming up on Christmas. Because like I said, it's a very environmentally friendly, uh, reusable source of saran wrap. Um, both for uh, historical events and just for regular picnic type events. Um, I've seen some people online, the ones that are selling it, they're like wrapping sandwiches in it and such. Well, that's what I was, I've always thought of it, not so much necessarily as saran wrap, because my saran wrap usually ends up on gucky stuff. Yeah. But a replacement for waxed paper. So all those oh, things okay. you need to wrap and keep the air mostly out of. I have, um, I have, I don't know about, like, I haven't done it with, like, stew on top of stews and stuff like that, but we did used to wrap our butter in it, and, uh, so butter melted all over them, so I did wash it just by hand, and it'll be all good to go again, so, yeah, nothing liquid I would put it in, but, yeah, definitely, um, maybe a sauce, stuff like that. But it should be good for wrapping cheeses and meats and Absolutely. that more firm stuff. Definitely. Excellent. Yeah. And for bread too, like wrap around the edge of the bread, uh, just keep it sort of to keep from drying out on the... That would work fantastic. And your house is going to, you should smell my house. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, oh, is that beeswax you're melting? Yes. <laughs> Let me do some more. I must say, as an aside, I do love the wall hanging that I see behind you. Which one is that? The Celtic. Oh, oh, thank you. You were using it as a curtain. The cats love it. Cause it kind of <laughs> it pulls in the bottom and they like hide in it and stuff. That's another reason it's against the wall because <laughs> otherwise they leap out and attack you. <laughs> Never, not that. Right? No. <laughs> These two, they're being shy today. Normally, if I'm in the kitchen, they're there looking. I mean, chili. Well, maybe they've learned beeswax doesn't taste good. It's like, oh, it's dull. No. Ew. That, I'd say that one of them, he's not the smartest. So I'd, I was going to say, he'd be like, no, the oven, not into that. But he would be. He's like, he's explored it when it's off, but try to discourage him from going too close to it. When I was a kid, we had a cat that jumped up on a red hot burner. My mom had just taken my mom. Ooh. Uh, I think the same cat jumped on the wood stove twice oh. when it was burning, so, yeah. <laughs> did you call him Ember after that? <laughs> like, do you, do you like the heat? I can't, yeah, like, I have no memory of what cat it was that did it. I just remember it happening, and mom being like... I feel sorrier for you if that wasn't stupid. <laughs> or if it wasn't the first time. It's like, you've done it a couple yeah. times now, so <laughs> there's a trend here. <laughs> well, in, like, my mom's in her 80s, 
has had cats all her life, and she's only ever seen one cat jump up on a stove in her entire life. Because our cats were not allowed near kitchen counters. Fair. Pardon? Have you ever been melting the wax in the um, in a microwave and doing the projecting the microwave? Uh, I haven't tried microwaving it. Um, I would have to, uh, I'd have to see about the spreadability and how long it would take to do. But no, that's, it's a curious way, especially if you got to make it in the summertime, that might work better. <laughs> my poor, I, I love fall because I get my bake on. That's when the cookies and cakes and muffins start out, but let's see. Okay. All right. Looks like we have it. My old pizza. I have a little corner here that nothing, but it's all completely melted. It's covered this entirely. So then I let it cool and then you peel it right off the right off the pan. And it shouldn't take too too long to cool down. I'm thinking if I had like a, a rope or something and some clothespins, I could probably just peel it off and like stick it up there and let it air dry that way. Especially if you're making a bunch of this, then you could just hang it, clip it up, and then just keep at it, keep making more as you're going as the oven's on. Yeah. Can you do more than one layer at a time? Um, just one per... One per sheet, I would say. Um, Cause then I think they would just all stick together. Got it. It's cooling off really quickly, actually. It's very stiff now. And then I can find something to wrap it on. I suppose if you put too much, like, put too much on, then once it was cooled and you put it over or, you know, tried to wrap something in it, that the that it would probably crack. Is that correct? Or does it seem to, because maybe because it's in the, uh, in the fabric, that it stays fairly pliable? Uh, I haven't ever had them crack, but I, I would imagine if there was too much on it, it would crack. There. That's tucked around there quite nicely. Can you show us? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and you just press it into place and there. Very much like wax paper. Only I think that it would seal a bit better too. It yeah. seals it'd be like a cool. cross between saran wrap and wax paper. So that it'll seal like saran wrap, but it works more like wax paper. There we go. Oh, neat. When I started Viking reenactment, this is one of the first things that I ever saw, and I was I was at Gimli, and there was a. Uh, that show sees like 60,000 people in the weekend, and that's all they wanted to talk to people about was the Viking saran wrap. I'm like, you guys got to see this. It's simple, but it's really, really cool. All they wanted to talk about was the fire pit, though. And the fire is that real fire, yada, yada. <laughs> it never, never ceases to amaze me the number of people that... <laughs> Historic reenactments. Who asked if the fire is real fire? Right. 
We have to rope them away from it or they'll burn themselves. <laughs> like, <Yeah. what? laughs> um, I have friends that are part of the Dark Ages Recreation Company. Uh huh. And they do Viking. They've been out to Lance and Meadows a few times. And they're like, mm. probably our most common question is, is that real fire? And they just sort of look at the person and want to, like, put up a sign. <laughs> Like, you could touch it if you want. <laughs> no. And, like, they're cooking on them. They're they're using them as heat sources. They're like... <laughs> like uh, Is that real fire you're using to melt the metal? Right, the blacksmiths? Oh, my God. Oh. I actually... At, at the Gimli show, I had somebody ask if they could film us chopping carrots. Uh, yeah, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Go for it. That was an odd one, for sure. Yeah. Well, that, that one, to some extent, I get more than the, the, the is it real fire thing, because they might be doing some little documentary project for something. And... Exactly. They need, like, a, a bite, like a little piece of someone chopping, yeah. historically, yeah. But the, is that real fire? No, it's fake fire to make it look exactly like real fire. And feel exactly like fire. And cook yeah, exactly yeah, and do like what fire. real fire does. <laughs> what would it be if it wasn't real fire? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Well, and like, I've worked in the entertainment industry for quite a few years, and fake fire is obvious. Because mainly, it gives off next to no heat. Right? Oh, I guess you can stand right in it and then it's like, <laughs> you're like, yeah. Let's see if we can get another one done. There we go. I might have to get a new potato peeler. <laughs> this is working so much better though. Okay, I highly recommend the potato peeler. Because in like those couple of minutes, I've got this much wax done. Whereas with the the grater, that's gonna take me probably like twenty minutes, and it's awkward. You could probably use, if you wanted to, like just uh, like just the big side of a box grater. Yeah, yeah, that would work. I think, I don't have, these are like Ikea ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, definitely. Work with what you got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I figured I'd use the small side because, because it made the smaller pieces and because who uses the tiny side? This is the kind of thing, if I wanted it this small, I'd put it in the uh, food processor, right? Anyways, into the wash with you. There we go. But this is a nice little trick for everybody who, uh, I mean, everybody who crafts and sews gear has bits and pieces of fabric left over, and it's too big to throw away, but too small to do something with, so it's like, what? What do you do with that? You can make bags. I have hundreds of bags. Linen bags, wool bags, and I'm like, giving them away. <sighs> this is too many. <laughs> oh yeah, this works great. So you say that you have bags, so would you, uh, would you complete the bag and then melt the wax on it or oh, would wow. you or would you uh, like lay out the pattern melt the wax and then uh, and then finish the bag um what I do is I would probably grab a grab the bag and do it much the same as this yeah just one side and then flip it more that would be an interesting so a wax linen bag it'd be like a ziploc I would think you would have to probably um, 
put the wax on it and then sew it. Because how much luck do you have prying two pieces of fabric apart once they've been waxed? That's true. Unless if you put something in between them. Put something in the bag, like a rock or something. Well, but it'd have to be something that would hold the fabric apart. Yeah. So like a, another piece of metal. Yeah. And then you'd have to have just enough give to be able to still pull it off. Because it would have to fill it fair, like, have you ever had one piece of linen overlap another? Like, how easy is it to get it to come back apart once it's done? Hey, we could try that. Let's see. Okay. There we go. Oh, this is smooth. Let's go. Don't mistake this for white chocolate. I was just slightly going like, ooh. That would be a disappointment. Okay. So, two pieces. Oh, that'll work. Let's see. I have a question. Yeah. Have you ever done it with block printed fabric? I haven't. That'd be uh, that'd be interesting to try. Uh, mostly because um, in the group that we were a part of, we weren't allowed to use black fabric. So block printed, as in oh. a design printed on it. Mm -hmm. I know that the Norse didn't have block printing except in the Kiwi and Roos area from about the ninth century on. So I was just curious if that was something you ever tried. No, not yet. But that like. Um... Uh, like you guys got me spinning because I was like what if I you know just got a bunch of I have a lot of cotton fabric from like mask making and stuff so what if I made these out of that and gave them as gifts to family who don't have to be uh, historically accurate and stuff so I got two pieces of linen I put some uh, beeswax on the top one let's see how that shapes up inside there See, do I have any fabric? Well, yes, I have fabric, but do I have any of that fabric? <laughs> oh no, I'm out of fabric. Sorry, guys, I got no marshals right now. Let's see how that goes. Where do I? Have? Yeah, I was just thinking it would be cool to put somebody's heraldry on it Ooh. and then make it into a uh, like a and then do that. So I was just curious. I'm going to try it. I've got some block printed fabric because that's my jam. So I'm going to uh, give it a try and let you know how it goes. That'd be amazing. I'm wondering if it would work better with more of an ink printing than a paint printing. So it's a little more permeable. Yeah. You'll have to post your results. My brain's going, woo. I'm like, where? Where do I have some fabric? Where do I have some colored fabric? Do you find the weight of the linen makes much of a difference? Uh, it's, it ends, lends itself to being malleable, I figure. I haven't tried it with cotton yet. That's, what? No, that's double-sided. Jeez. Cotton. Let's see. 
this lends itself to all kinds of experiments. I may have to... I may have to go to Marshall's and get a whole bunch of fabric. And then post Remember, you're in lockdown. Essentials runs only. Ah! <laughs> right? Ah! It is essential <laughs> to my well-being. <laughs> Well, you, you could put out a call to your local friends and see who has bits in their house they could drop off on your porch. That's right. Please help. <laughs> in need. <laughs> Lend me your fabric. <laughs> Actually, that might be one of the best ways to do the testing is you'd get a, you know, you'd get a good range of things to try. Oh, exactly. Yep. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Well, I have lots of crafter friends, and I'm positive that they've got extra fabric, you know. Yeah. Or like even a, a six or eight inch square is sufficient for a test. Yeah. And still somewhat usable. And still useful. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was like, you know, for a small bowl, that would do. Well, I was thinking um, cup covers. Yes. Summertime, those... you don't want bugs in your cups. <laughs> exactly. I was just going to say to keep those pesky uh, critters out. And wasps. Get out. Get your own coffee, Mr. Wasp. Yeah. Your wasps, wow. Our wasps just go after the sweet drinks, not so much the coffee. Ours were kind of jerks this year. Yeah, I was enjoying myself out on the couch and the patio, you know, for May. And then June came. And June, most of June, then all of a sudden, bzzz, like, oh, yeah, July, no. August, no. September, yay! Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine Eldemir's having to fight wasps for their coffee. There'd be broken pottery. <laughs> or sippy cups. One or the other. Sippy cups. We lived in a house with a hot tub. And so, yeah, we got all kinds of sippy cups for people who drop their drinks. So I don't want to drink, I don't want to bathe in your beer. Here, yeah. use this. It's safe. <laughs> and I sure don't want you to waste the beer. No. So, before I got into Viking, my friends, uh, I was like in college, my friends told me this myth that uh, if you drop alcohol or spill it, that there's a barrel waiting for you outside Valhalla that you have to drink all the alcohol that you've spilled in your lifetime before you can enter Valhalla. That, that's no, that's not a myth. That, that, that's that's for true. Okay, good. I'm not spreading lies then. <laughs> I've got quite a barrel. Maybe two. <laughs> I'm clumsy. <laughs> I've, I've heard the word of that. <laughs> I think that's how I heard it was that there was a bat of all the alcohol. And some people only had an inch or two, and some of the vat was full, and, and and it was, and it was you were hung by your ankles to drink it too. Like Whoa. It was, oh. Okay, that's getting a little intense. <laughs> like if you want to drink it, I can do that. Challenge accepted. But please put me the right way up. <laughs> well, you know, it's done to try and encourage Eldamirians not to drink, drop their booze. So. <laughs> I was questioning the logistics of that. Now, is it booze that or beer or alcohol that you yourself had and dropped or somebody else's? So if you spill somebody else's, does that go in your vat? Because I'm in big trouble. They, like trouble. I think but... the wording is it's the alcohol you have spilled. Oh. Uh... the wording I got. Uh-oh. So it's not who owns the alcohol but who <laughs> spilt it. Well. It's a punishment for waste of a sort. I call it storing away for future use. <laughs> That's really it. <laughs> Kitty! <laughs> That's yeah. a bingo card. This is Quality Control Cat. She <laughs> um, inspects all my printed clothing, and sometimes she gets a paw print on some pieces, <laughs> and uh, people pay extra for that. I was going to say, that should be worth more than yep. just normal. Like, anybody can block print fabric. But to get the perfect paw print, that's... 
That would be to fun. have it cat approved because I mean you know cats were royalty back in Egypt so uh, they, they were still <laughs> they are. haven't they <laughs> haven't changed this one has not changed I but yeah her name is quality control cat if you go to my Facebook page on adventures in block printing you'll see her on it a lot and you know I I beg to qualify that not everyone can block print fabric. Some people find it very difficult. <laughs> but that is the easy part. Getting the cat to put their paw on it. That's, right. the, that's the hard part. <laughs> Getting a cat to do anything that you want them to do. Yeah. Or not do. Or not do. That's why they get so many treats and I think they're on to me for that. They're like, okay. If I do bad things, she'll give me treats to distract me. If I do good things, she'll give me treats for as a reward. Oh, no, no. Water water spray bottle, water <laughs> gun for bad. With a, just a couple of drops of vinegar in it. Ooh. Just enough that you can smell it. Apparently cats do not like the smell of vinegar. No, they don't. Them. Whenever I make anything with a can, especially chili, my... One cat insists on inspecting every single can. She's the tuna control. So she has to inspect to make sure there's no tuna in that can. She'll, yeah. whatever she's doing, sleeping, napping, she gets up and comes in the kitchen. You have to put the can on the floor. She looks at it. No, it's not tuna. And she walks away. So, or if it is tuna, the noise is amazing. You have to drain it and put it in a bowl and put it on the floor for her. But wow, just the cat, literally caterwauling. So, I had a cat that could tell the difference between a tuna can and every other can on the face of the earth. See, that's a blessing. Because then you don't have to do that approval process the whole way. <laughs> it, well, from yes. But it meant if you were trying to quickly open a can of tuna to do something, you had a scrolling cat that could reach the countertop yelling at you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because when yeah. he stood on his back feet, his paws fit just, sat just to the edge of the counter nicely. And he'd be in there, paws on the edge of the counter, like body checking, like, where's my tuna? Where's the tuna? Where's the tuna? Like, Dude, I have only cracked the tin. I have not managed to crank the handle to open it yet. Give me a minute. So. Exact same can, flake ham. Didn't even wake up. I put that folded <clears throat> piece of linen. Yeah. I put wax just on the top and it's actually gone through to the other side. Cool. So, so both sides. No problem. No problem. Oh, there's our answer then. Boom. I feel like Mythbusters. But like far less sciencey. Far, far less sciencey. And and less boom. Yeah, oh yeah. I think my favorite one of theirs was exploring the um, don't mix your alcohol. And you know what? I don't remember what the actual result of that one was. I just remember they got absolutely wasted like three times in quality control tests. I'm like, what a job to have. The test subject couldn't handle his liquor. This was the result. They said it, no difference, actually. Yeah. You know, I've been watching way too much of um, not Jamie, the other guy, Adam on YouTube since lockdown started in March. I, I tested out the intoxilizer, which was a roadside, um, the roadside impaired tester for Alberta. That was fun. Oh, wow. Mm. And, and how drunk did it find you? Did you ever watch WKRP and saw this, saw the part where Johnny Fever was drinking and he got more and more better at everything he did the more drunker he got? <laughs> That was yes. me. Uh -huh. Yes, and the, the, the highway patrol officer was getting more and more and more upset with him. Yeah, that was that was me. Apparently, um, my yeah. Scottish roots have come through. Like, yes, <laughs> that's like some of my friends with cerebral palsy. If they, the more they drink, the less uh, affected they appear to be. Me, unfortunately, doesn't work. I drink more, I get more and more uh, impaired, but at least with me, because I'm walking with canes or a walker, people are reluctant to say anything. 
Because <laughs> they can't tell unless they know me. They can't tell if it's just because of the cerebral palsy or because I've been consuming uh, much too much good stuff. Well, as long as it's the good stuff and not the bad stuff. Yeah. Well. <laughs> like, be picky. I tried my hand at making kvass. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, I bottled it last night and it stinks. It smells horrible. It tasted pretty good, which I find is weird because I was always understanding that your nose and your mouth kind of went together in the whole eating, if it, you know. Yeah. So how is something, it really it smells awful. We need a long straw to drink it with. Uh, it was fairly potent. So it, it only brewed for three days, so. I think there's also a few things that your nose picks up that your mouth doesn't necessarily and vice versa. Your mouth is just like, give it to me! And your nose is like, no, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> All right, trying for a round one. I wonder if there's any other things like, um, does anybody have any ideas of other things besides just like uh, saran wrap-ish to make out of this? Like, what else could we wax? A big hairy viking that is drunk too much? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. That would be just like out of the 40-year-old virgin. I love that scene. I, I actually know a knight in Eldemir that volunteered and they, um, for each amount of money that was donated to, I think it was breast cancer, he got to have a different part of his body wax. Oh. Let's just say it's one thing to be the volunteer, but you should probably insist on having somebody somewhat sober do the waxing so they can do it the right directions and Ooh. stuff. Yeah, apparently, yeah, yeah, they actually had to stop people because he was starting to actually get injured. Ow. And like, it was like he'd lost both eyebrows, he'd lost all the hair off his body, basically. Oh. And yes, the, 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 the very tender bits were done professionally sober. Oh, good. Yeah, because that's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, like that, yeah. And there was, I, they did his back, they did his chest, and I think they did his lower legs, and then partway up the thighs, somebody went, and you're stopping now because this, that's blood. Who, who was it? Um, Aaron Presley. Oh, I know Aaron. I'm not saying he might not have deserved most of the torture. <laughs> oh my god. That's a good fundraiser idea, though. I think it'd be easier to have the tender bits done first because I think that's where people would probably target first. That's the first thing, first thing I thought. Well, was like, eh. yeah. His his wife was sort of spearheading the uh, procedure, <laughs> and I think they actually started with the more normal area. I think they might have started on his chest, like they already had two people holding him down by that point. <laughs> And as the night went on, 
and the alcohol levels increased, there were more people having to hold him down because it started to hurt too much. I'm seeing the scene from Braveheart with the the old guy and they taking the arrow out. Yeah. <laughs> Take this. I'll hold him down. <laughs> it was uh, it was entertainment. I forget how much money she, the woman who was doing the fundraising. And I, I have no idea how he got talked into being the, um, <laughs> well, okay, it was Aaron. Um, <laughs> There's bribery. It's like, okay, so for every, for every waxing, you get a shot or a pint or. <laughs> um. He's also just the type of goof that would be like, this is a good cause, I should do the thing. And not actually think it through, through. to its obvious conclusion. Until he's deep in the horrible, horrible, like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> oh, my life. Oh, bad decisions. <laughs> and, and I'm sure there was no alcohol involved when he was agreeing to do it. Absolutely like, I'm not. I'm sure he was stone cold sober at that moment. Thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> like he was obviously still able to verbally you know agree to it maybe uh, just so you know we've got about three or four minutes to wrap up sorry I kind of lost track of time that's alright and I hear the next teachers are real sticklers <laughs> hey now <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say for what. <laughs> I'm still not entirely sure how my how the class is going to go, so it's an experiment. I love that mug. I like that, that evil eye I got is I think she was actually trying to get her microphone to turn back, back on, but... <laughs> It is going to be wonderful because people will learn stuff. <laughs> and learning is always wonderful. I and, love and, then you can do it bigger. and then you'll always be able to do it bigger, better, and better next time. Ooh. And that was an unpaid commercial advertisement. <laughs> Checks in the mail, Thorndike. 